Hi, I'm Maria Thea Harris of LSOs on social media. You're listening to a great Sewing Friends Sew Over 50 podcast on Sew Organised Style. Stay listening. Sew Organised Style podcast acknowledges traditional owners of country throughout Australia. We pay our respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures and to the Elders past, present and emerging. Thanks for joining us on Sew Organised Style podcast for Sew Over 50 series about sewing friends. Sew Over 50 intersects with all communities. Today's podcast features two sewing friends as we continue with the series for the Sew Over 50 community. And you've actually already met both Julie and Gabrielle. Listeners, in part one, you heard how Gabrielle and Julie met and have stayed solid friends since that very first online meeting. In today's podcast, you'll hear about what Julie and Gabrielle have planned for 2022. And there's more sew alongs coming up. We have a few patterns that we already exchanged. So um, come spring, we will have to do a little bit of planning. Germans do planning. I will write it down and then we have it in writing. <laughs> so there's a couple of patterns we shared that we actually wanted to sew. And, and see the different versions. I always find it very fascinating. It's the same pattern, the same concept of a dress or a garment. And then it looks very different what people do. The length of the skirt or the fabric, it changes a lot of things. So there's a couple that we have talked about where we have to think if we want to do the two of us or if we want to invite Kerstin and Nicole, see what their plans are. So there's more solos coming. Mm-hmm. The visit to Minnesota has been postponed until 2023. Yeah, so we might have to wait on that. You know, going back to the so longs and that, like, I'd only done one indie pattern before meeting Gabrielle. I did a Cali shirt, okay? So that was the one thing, but that was like basically, and and that's, it's hard to even, I mean, she's from Canada, I think. So it, it just seemed easy and natural, but I'd never really had my eyes open to other things. And Gabrielle is the one, she bought me my first stocks pattern. That's right. She bought that for me and sent it to me. And I saw her coat and I am like, oh my gosh, I want one. And yes, Gabrielle got that for me as a little gift. And of course, I made mine looking almost identical to hers. But that was the beginning of, you know, super cool. My eyes had been open to a real pattern designer you know, and Lindy from Stocks Pattern. And so from then you and I have made, you know, multiple things. Mm. But then I also love the fact, you know, cause I was born and raised on the big four pattern companies. Cause you know, that's what yeah. we had available to us in small town, Minnesota. You just buy your pattern out of this rack and there it is. So for you to never have experienced like a Betterick pattern, I thought that was funny. The funny paper. I mean, what is this? Is it an intelligence test? You have this paper that you unfold it once and it never goes back into the bottle. It's like the genie is out of the bottle and it will never go back. Okay, now see what's so funny about that is I have spent my entire life, I fold them exactly on the same creases, Mm -hmm. the same way. I mean, that's how I was taught by my mother. Just like map folding, you fold your pattern pieces, they go back in after you finish using them, they go back in the pattern exactly the same because you fold this one and then this one and this one. So when you wrote that, I'm like, I laughed my head off because it's like, well, what do you mean? You just follow the creases. You fold them the same way and put them in the, in the envelope again. Creases have no logic. If you have a map, yeah, it has a logic. That's true though. And it is thicker paper. So the creases are really strong and it will more or less automatically you know like a accordion um go back in place but those don't the paper is too thin and you can't see the creases and it's like somebody randomly i try to make them very flat and then i fold them like a normal person would do it (laughs) yeah so always in half or what i've also done with uh, um, vogue 1922 i cut the m size out because the sizes are not overlining. So I cut it out. It's like Marmite or Vegemite. You know, you have to grow up with it to like it. I understand that. But it is interesting to see how even in our 50 plus year old lives that we can still learn new things and try new things. And 
I can't believe. And then with our so long with the wardrobe by me, the, the shirt. Yeah. And you don't have the pleasure to have seen the booklet of wardrobe by me. See, it comes in a real hard cover and then it folds nicely it's back into shape. Okay. That is different for me. <laughs> Yeah, that is. You have to cut that out. It's not visible. Mm -hmm. You have to do a post. Yeah, exactly. See, big four? This is how it's done. No, but it works the other way around too because I've never used buttery bow or what's the other one? McCall's. McCall's. Yeah, never used them before. Then I saw things that Julie made and I was like, oh, that looks nice. And there's this blouse with the buttons going diagonally. I still want to do that at spring. Yes, you need to. But only after you said I can do loops instead of buttonholes. Yes, because when you said that you wanted to avoid buttonholes, I think it would look lovely with the loops. So, so yeah. yes, that's on your list. So yeah, that is one thing that we have had several twinning pictures of us that has been fun. Usually Gabrielle will do a, a wonderful photo shoot and then send me some examples of like, okay, I, instead of pose like the model, I have to pose like Gabrielle. Let me, let me see if I can do this. You made the top, yeah. but you photographed yourself on the lounge chair. And I thought that photo, I mean, you are so daring. You dare to do things. You take shots and like, okay, if she photographs herself sleeping on that lounge chair in this lounge outfit, I can do that too. We have a leather couch too. So Richard had to take a photo of me lying on that leather couch directing me that I looked similar to you and then I reposted that. And that I think was the first twinning we did. I think it might have been, exactly. And then from there, kind of has gone crazy a little bit. <laughs> twinning Tuesdays on Thursdays, but I think it kind of dried up after three or four times. We have to do that again. Yes, it was, we'll have to get back to that. Yeah, 2022, yeah, a bit more twinning. Yeah, this fall was really busy with catching up on family visits. Yeah. Well, and that was part of it. That could easily be part of it too, is how fun to talk to each other when we weren't talking in real life to people because of restrictions and COVID and stuff. So it's like, um, Gabrielle was definitely a lifeline for me in terms of, you know, getting somebody to talk to about not only the sewing, but, you know, other fun things and family. And, mm -hmm. and so it was just a perfect thing, you know, when I needed it. And then it just kept going. Um, I think of her as my little sister. Oh. Yes. Little, little because she is smaller than me in size and much younger. The sisterly feeling I share, but I don't, I, as I'm the oldest in my family, <laughs> I'm not used to having an older sister. <laughs> That's one of the things that has been coming out with all of these podcasts of Sewing Friends is that it's been a way that people have been able to connect with someone that they share a friendship that starts with sewing and is seeing them through this time where everyone's in some sort of isolation at various parts of the, of the year. And 2020, 2021 has been like that. We have these skills now for 2022 and beyond. You are so right, Maria. I think sewing is a hobby like other hobbies as well. And it connects people. Like if you have a garden, you can always talk with another gardener about the tomato seeds and different tomato types and how you grow them and what you do against the snails. But to really develop a friendship, I think it needs to be the same philosophy or the same view on sewing. Because there's nerds, there's people that take it very seriously. I've been to two sewing camps and the first was a lot of fun. That's where I met Kraskin and some other people. And the second, they were all pros. There was no talking. They started at seven in the morning and they sewed until midnight. I can do that at home if I don't talk to people, you know, why, why are you coming here? Mm -hmm. So there's a basis where you can talk to sewers and it's always enriching to learn more and get tips how to treat this fabric and, and that fabric and that, what does a different foot do. But to develop into more, I think it's also how you view your hobby, you know, how serious you take yeah. it. Like with other hobbies as well, you know, if you play tennis or if you like driving a car or, or whatever, you know, there's always different views, how serious you take it and if there's anything else you can talk about besides. And that reminds me of, you know, we spent the first year only DMs, like only talking through pictures and texts and, and Instagram kind of things. <laughs> 
And so then we finally did a Zoom call and that added a whole new dimension and a whole new level. And it's almost, you're braver than me in, in, in sharing how long we talked. I was almost like shocked because it's like the time just goes crazy. But what was the last time we talked for like two and a half hours? Or two and a half hours. <laughs> two and a half hours on Zoom. Yeah, the, our spouses are like, you know, hey, hey, isn't it time for, for supper or something? <laughs> <laughs> How's your tongue doing? Is it still working or? I don't know how it happens. We schedule a Zoom call and I kind of have to block the morning or however many hours because it's like, if I'm talking to Germany, it's like, hey, nobody can call me for the next two and a half hours because I'm talking to Gabrielle. Yeah, but the Zoom call was your idea. I thought it was really cool. And that is also something that I can't do with most of my friends because they have kids. <gasps> yeah, yeah they're, they're working moms. They have no time. Mm. But did we want to go to Iceland together? Because that's the other thing. My friends all still have family and they can't travel where they want to. Richard doesn't want to go to Iceland. So we're going to go to Iceland together. I'm going to Iceland. Absolutely. <laughs> it is. We are doing that. You tell me when, because that is on my, my list to do with Gabrielle. Before I lure you away to Iceland, um, I'm going to show you Europe. We're going to do France and Italy and Germany together. Maybe even England. See, we have all sorts of plans, Maria. We have all sorts of plans. Yeah. They sound like wonderful plans. Be looking forward to seeing all of the photos on Instagram. You want to come along, Maria? I think so, but not for the whole lot because then I'll be the third wheel and I can't be the third wheel. We can see who else we know in Europe so we can do the so over 50 travel along. There you go. Speaking of that, it's like you should say, Gabrielle, what you call so over 50 as far as connecting people. Oh, yeah. For the dating platform? Can you explain that? The dating service, as I said, you know, so over 50 started so many friendships people met through so over 50. I mean, as I said, it was um, in February 2020 that I first saw them and learned about them. Mm -hmm. Then they had 25,000 followers, 30, 35, you know, it's exploding. It's, it's a very steep growth curve. The people I follow, they tend to know each other. So there's, it's like a classroom. Yeah, where, where you see the chats and you know who knows whom. A lot of love stories started through So Over 50. Yes, it's definitely the matchmaking behind our meeting. You know, so who needs match.com when you have So Over 50? Exactly. Judith or Sandy, they said at one point that they like the discussions. They're not so much interested only in the like. They want the interaction with each other, the, the comments and the learning and the sharing. Yeah. And as they are supporting that and nourishing that behavior, encouraging people to make comments and to talk to each other, I think that's fostering these relationships. And opening up the window to meeting other people or, you know, introducing people because, you know, Silver 50 is continuing to, you know, on their stories or in their posts, it's like, here are more people that you might want to follow or here are more people, you know, look what they're doing. And it's all sizes it's all techniques it's all abilities and even all ages even if they are called so over 50 i know that they're welcoming to everybody all genders all everything whatever you want to say they're very inclusive and saying hey have you met this person or have you seen this technique or what are your thoughts and challenging people in their views as well as their like they had the print mixing challenge mm -hmm. and it's like Oh, I stink at that. But who doesn't like a challenge? And why not give it a try? It was fun and then great to see other people and what they're doing and how they're putting things together. And I think it's easy, at least for me, maybe I don't know how you are, but for me, it's easy to get into a rut, into only the things that, you know, here's my style or here's my colors or here's, mm -hmm. you know, this is like all the stuff that I do is like right here in this little box. But then to see other people, it's like, oh, I never thought of that. Or, you know, with the way that Gabrielle uses a salvage on her. I mean, I cut off the salvage and throw it away, for goodness sakes. And look at her. She uses a salvage as a decorative trim on her clothes. Awesome. Beautiful. I mean, not all salvages are worth using, mm -hmm. but some are really nice. 
And depending on your neck hole, you can use it. Or for jackets, it, um, depending on the material, you can use it for the sleep edge or is it a jacket edge. I like using the salvage. It's true. I, I come back to the same stuff also. I'm curious to see how my sewing will develop going forward because... I don't know if I need the fourth or fifth dress of the same pattern or if I actually going to start doing buttonholes. You never know. Buttonholes, buttonholes, you can do it. My machine doesn't do good buttonholes. And I need this tool where you can do the equidistance between the, the buttonholes. Otherwise, they're all crooked lengthwise and horizontally and vertically. So, yeah, 2023 maybe. We all need a goal. Because I'm traveling to, to Minnesota in 2023. You might be able to pick something up when you're traveling. I'm traveling with a sewing machine, yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, we could start bed and breakfast, like sew and breakfast or so. Oh, that would be a dream. You, you hop over from one sewist to the next. Okay. Sit down and sew. A progressive dinner. Like you start at one person's house for appetizers. You go to one person's house for the dinner and one person's house for dessert. Okay, so we go to one person's house for some sewing, you know, and then go to the next person's house for some sewing. Or, okay, I gotta tell you, I have enough sewing machines. I could invite people over. They don't even have to carry their sewing machine across the Atlantic, okay? There you go. I could set people up and we could, we'll have to work on that. All right, more goals for 2023. Yeah, we have to learn Maria out of Australia. Oh, no problem. I'm on a plane <laughs> as soon as I can. <laughs> no worries. All right. Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you, Julie. Oh, thank you, Gabrielle. Thank you, Maria. Thanks for inviting us. Thanks for having us. And like in the Oscar Awards, we want to thank Judith and Sandy for making this all happen. Without them, we wouldn't be here. Exactly. This would not have been possible. Thank you, Judith and Sandy, for creating Salva 50 and nourishing all of the sewing friends that have happened over the last two years. Julie, Gabrielle, thank you for coming back on the podcast and sharing your sewing story with us because it's more than just the photo that we've seen. We've now heard from both of you, and that's awesome. Have a good day, you two. It's been our pleasure, and, yeah, this is fabulous. My pleasure as well, and have a lovely day, listeners. This episode of Soul Organized Style Podcast for Soul Over 50 was produced by me, Maria Theoharis, with permission of Julie and Gabrielle. Sound by bensound.com. You can subscribe to Soul Organized Style Podcast, but with an S, not a Z, on all good podcast apps. Make sure you give us a five star rating and review. Support this podcast through our Patreon account, as every podcast is free. We have so many great Soul Over 50 podcasts for you to catch up on and hear from the great people in the Sew Over 50 community. We hope these podcasts help you stay connected and make you smile. Post any questions or podcast suggestions you have on our podcast website at seworganizedstyle.com or on our Facebook page or on our Instagram account at Style. We look forward to joining you in your sewing room next time. Stay safe, everyone. <laughs>